So we'll get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Probably get home. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Keith Beatrice is beautiful, and the city of Beatrice are here to recognize the 2023 Mayor of the Day winners in our Great American Cleanup Recycling Project. Between April 12th through April 21st, 2023 second grade students at Lincoln School, Haddock Lane School, St. Joseph Catholic School, and St. Paul's Lutheran School collected items for recycling. Their efforts, uh, their recycling efforts help keep the atmosphere clean and beautiful. We are grateful for the second grade students who participated and acknowledge them for keeping our city clean and litter free. The Mayor for Day winners will receive a certificate of Appreciation for keep are from Keep Beatrice Beautiful and the City of Beatrice, a gift card for a combo meal from Runza, and a coupon for a blizzard from East Court Dairy Queen. So as I read your name, would you please come forward to accept your certificate? First person, Larry Barnhouse. For the popcorn. <laughs> we got Dairy Queen coming. <laughs> wow. All right. Is Steve Kelly in the bedroom? <laughs> really? Good. Okay. So, I see, as I see in the back. Yep. In the back. Because he usually says something. You bet. The uh, Open Meetings Act is on the wall over there, um, and the meeting room is accessible to the members of the public. Uh, we did the mayor for the day. We have two proclamations tonight. First one is Drinking, Drinking Water Week, May 7th through the 13th, 2023. 
whereas water is our most valuable natural resource, and whereas drinking water serves a vital role in daily life, serving as an, as an essential purpose to health, hydration, and hygiene, needs for the quality of water, quality of life our citizens enjoy. And whereas tap water delivers public health protection, fire protection, support for our economy and the quality of life we enjoy, and whereas the hard water performed by the entire water sector, designing capital projects, operators, ensuring the safety and quality of drinking water, or a member of a pipe crew maintain the infrastructure communities rely on to transport high quality drinking water from its source to consumers' taps, and whereas we are all stewards of the water infrastructure upon which current and future generations depend, and whereas the citizens of our city are called upon to help protect our source waters from pollution, practice water conservation, and get involved with their water by familiarizing themselves with it. Now, therefore, I, Robert Morgan, Mayor of the City of Beatrice, uh, proclaim May 7th through the 13th, 2023, as Drinking Water Week. Witness my hand and official seal of the City of Beatrice this first day of May 2023. And if Mr. Kelly would come up, we will present this to them. Well, we're very fortunate in Beatrice that we have an adequate supply of water. Um, as we all know, water is always on the news, either not enough or too much. Uh, we're very fortunate that we do have an adequate supply at this time. With the drought we have at the, presently, uh, I don't feel we'll have any problems this year. If it continue maybe for four or five years, then, then we'll have to maybe make adjustments, but uh, we're, like I say, we are very fortunate uh, with the supply we have. The department itself, uh, we have uh, 10 employees, and including myself, we have over 200 years of experience. I have six employees that have 30 plus years uh, with the department. Uh, I'm fortunate I've had nearly 51 years on the department, uh, and uh, I've always enjoyed it, uh, otherwise I would have been looking for something else, but it's uh, been a good, it's been good for me. I appreciate what the council does and our Board of Public Works uh, support that they've given us in the past. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. The next proclamation is to highlight Teachers Appreciation Week, and in Beatrice, I believe Teacher Appreciation Day is May 3rd. Teacher Appreciation Week from May 8th through the 12th of 2023, whereas teachers mold future citizens through guidance and education, and whereas our country's future depends on providing quality education to all students, and whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling and coaching students, and performing community service, and whereas teachers play a crucial role in shaping our children into the people they will become, supporting them through their youth and teaching lessons that will have an impact on students they will carry throughout life. And whereas our community recognizes and supports teachers in educating the children of this community, I now therefore, Robert Morgan, Mayor of Beat City of Beatrice, do hereby proclaim May 8th, through May 12th, 2023 is Teacher Appreciation Week and extend appreciation to all the teachers of the Beatrice Public Schools as well as all private and home schools within the community. Witness my hand and the seal of the city of Beatrice this first day of May, 2023. And I believe there's somebody here to accept. Doris, how are you? <coughs> It's a joint project. 
between the Educational <laughs> Foundation and the school district. Right. <laughs> Jason, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to say as a former educator, I know the amount of hours that teachers put in each and every day and also the dedication that some of them show not only in the classroom but as coaches, sponsors of activities, and um, I think we all owe them a debt of gratitude for what they do each and every day in some very challenging times. So say, tell a teacher thank you. All right. Doris, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a councilman so requests. Item A, approve agenda as submitted. Item B, re receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. <clears throat> Item C, replace and uh, receive and place on file materials having any bearing on this meeting. Uh, D, approval of minutes of the regular meeting on April 17th, 2023, as on file in the city clerk's office. Item E, approval of treasurer's report of claims in the amount of $279,490.97. Item F, approval of Boswell claims in the amount of $40,435.91. Award of RFP for the Chautauqua Park Waterfall Restoration Projects to Sticks and Stones in the amount of $89,940. Award of bid for the Beatrice Municipal Airport Roof Bids 2023 project to shown roofing in the amount of $807, $807,602.50. He probably wouldn't want to be shorted. <laughs> As recommended by the Airport Advisory Board. Award of bid for the East Court Street 24th through 26th Street Hike Bike Trail Construction 2023 project to Lotman Carpenter Construction in the amount of $86,017. Approval of work change directive number one from Olson Incorporated on behalf of Myers Construction to extend the completion date to November 30, 2023 for the water main replacement project as part of the 2021 water SRF project as recommended by the Board of Public Works. <clears throat> Approval of special designated license for Colleen's Catering LLC for the Sol Sol Solstic Gravel Grinder Bike Race event on June 17th, 2023 from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the West Street uh, Ballpark, 454 Scott Street, Beatrice, Nebraska. Resolution number 7055, appointing Tracy Hartley <coughs> to the Community Redevelopment Authority. <coughs> Item M, resolution number 7056, executing any and all documents necessary to accept the Department of Health and Human Services <coughs> Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Relief Fund for the purchase of an ambulance. Item N, resolution number 7057, executing any and all documents necessary to accept the State of Nebraska Department of Economic Development Qualified Census Track Recovery Grant Program. Uh, for the purpose of beautifying and increasing pedestrian mobility and access in the town downtown area. Item O, resolution number 7058, executing any and all documents necessary to accept the safe streets and roads for all grant program for the purpose of developing a citywide safety action plan. And that's the consent agenda. Uh, anybody wants anything pulled off? Mayor, I'd like to postpone item H until our next scheduled council yeah, meeting. Pull it off first. Okay, I, and we'll, we'll pull it off. Yep. Anything else? <clears throat> Mr. McLean. I move the items listed on the consent agenda with the exception of item H be approved, accepted, and ratified as presented. Second. Your vote, please. And that passes. Okay, Mr. McLean. I move that 
the well, item H on the consent agenda be approved, accepted, and ratified as presented. Second. Okay. Discussion. Yes, I'd like this postponed uh, till our next council meeting, next scheduled council meeting, uh, until we have a little bit further review with some uh, other information that I think we need to discuss. So, and I think we could have uh, some, uh, with Tobias's help and the mayor's, maybe we could uh, kind of get through this a little better than what's been presented to us tonight. Discussion? Your vote, please. Well, Oops. Man. Gary, you want to make that a motion to postpone? Yes, oh. I do. Is there a second for the motion? I'll second it. Second by Rue. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And then the motion is to postpone item H until the next council meeting. That would be the item up for discussion and vote. And discussion from the council. Okay, your vote, please. That item has been postponed for two weeks and will be on the agenda in two weeks. Public hearings and bids. Public hearings to receive the semi annual report of Citizens Advisory Review Committee as provided by the Local Option Municipal Economic Development Act, RRS. 1943. Yeah, to give you your uh, um, semi-annual update, if you looked at the financials, you see that we have a number of outstanding loans. All of them are current. Uh, they're making their payments, uh, so things are going well on uh, the LB840 side of things. Um, trying to pull up the financials, I believe at the, as of the end of March, uh, we had roughly 800,000, a little more than that, in that particular fund uh, there. Uh, it also looks at the CBG Revolving Loan Fund. <coughs> You'll look in there, we have one loan outstanding. Um, that is to Dog's Hut. They're making their payments. We structured that so they made payments on the CBG grant first and then the LB41. Uh, they're almost done with their CDBG grant. Funds in that um, particular um, line item are about $86,000. If you recall, the state wants us to get rid of those funds, so we've been using them to remove architectural barriers. Uh, we started with some hollow sidewalks in the downtown, doing some work there. Uh, we added a bathroom uh, on the trail system. And then, uh, most recently, as of tonight, you approved a contract with Lotman Carpenter for construction of a trail between 24th and 26th Street along Highway 136. Uh, the funding for that particular trail will come from the CBG <coughs> Revolving Loan Fund. We'll be left with a few dollars, and right now Mark is looking at some different por portions of the trail that are broken and busted and just need to be replaced. Uh, we're looking at how we can update a few of those things with these last few remaining dollars. So that is the update on your CARC committee. Gentlemen, any just Yeah. T, um, the only question I thought a few months ago we were going to do something with those uncollectible receivables. On the LB840 side of things? Yeah, Center Economic Development Fund. Um, we'll Page five or six, maybe. Yep, I'm trying to zoom in here. Just makes our assets look bigger than what. Yeah, um, that uncollectible that receivable, long. that is for, um, it's the same amount as the SEND housing that you have out there. That's what it's from. Okay, so the um, when I was there, we had a list of uncollectibles. Do we write that off? Did they come to the city council and it was written we off? We have not had any uncollectibles through the LB40 loan program. The only thing we have is that uh, money that we put into the housing program was SEND. Right. And if and when that yeah. stops, we can get that money back. Okay. All right. That's the only question I had, Mayor. <clears throat> Anyone from the public? Seeing none. Mr. McLean. I move the public hearing be closed at 7.19 p.m. Second. Gentlemen, your vote, please. And again, that passes 6-0. On to resolutions. A, resolution number 7059, acknowledging that pursuant to Nebraska revised statute 3-502, parenthesis 6, the corporate existence of the Beatrice Airport Authority has terminated by operation of law as of June 1st, 2022, as recommended by the Airport Advisory Board. I move the resolution number 7059 be passed and adopted. Second. 
Okay, discussion. Uh, it might seem a bit of a repeat, but uh, we're still working on transferring the airport authority board over to the city of Beatrice. Uh, locally, we're good. State level, we're fine. The FAA has some forms that they want filled out and signed, and so we're working on getting those in the right order uh, for the FAA. And so one of the things they asked was that we yet again pass this resolution. Uh, so you can see we had the airport advisory board take action on it last week and bring it back to you guys. Um, same thing with the next resolution as well. Again, just more procedurally, just trying to get everything in squared away with the FAA. Discussion from the public. Seeing none, your vote, please. <clears throat> that passes 6 0. Resolution number 7060 executing any and all documents necessary to accept and assume all rights of properties and obligations of the Beatrice Airport Authority, including but not limited to, limited to all contracts, grant agreements, and other binding commitments, including but not limited to an assignment and assumption agreement with the Beatrice Airport Authority as recommended by the Airport Advisory Board. I move the resolution number 7060 be passed and adopted. Second. One of the things the FAA is concerned about is the airport has had a number of grants over the years. In those grants, like all federal grants, there's a bunch of other obligations that you have to have in perpetuity, essentially. Uh, they want to make sure the city understands what we're taking on. They're no different than all the obligations we have in all of our federal funds already, and so we're very familiar with what those are. And this is just saying, yes, we understand what they are. We agree to take them on and uh, continuing that process. Discussion? From the public, your vote, please. That passes six zero. Resolution number seven zero six one, execute an agreement between the city and the Covered Bridge Heights Homeowners Association regarding the transfer of control and maintenance of the Covey Circle and South Twenty Fifth Street from Quail Ridge Circle to the city limit line east of the Covered Bridge. I move the resolution number 7061 be passed and adopted. Second. So uh, South 25th Street is what goes into Flowing Springs, and then that turns into Covered Bridge Heights, that Quail Ridge Circle. It goes to the Covered Bridge, and then at Covered Bridge, it turns into Flowing Springs Heights West Edition after the Covered Bridge there. Um, on our comprehensive plan, we show South 25th Street becoming basically a collector street through that area. Uh, when it was originally designed and developed, the developer made it a private street open to the public, and so that's why it's functioned ever since then. We had an agreement with Ho Flowing Springs Homeowner Association uh, about a year ago. They were going to make some improvements to South 25th Street, and the city had agreed that had they made those improvements, the city would take over that portion of the street. Uh, the Homeowner Association ultimately did not make those improvements, and so that has remained uh, the way it's always been, private street open to the public. At this time, the Covered Bridge Heights Homeowners Association has approached us and asked to do a similar agreement uh, where if they make certain improvements to the streets, then the city would take over their portion of uh, the street. So James Burroughs and, and Jason Moore have gone out, they've looked at the streets, they made a report, actually made one a couple years ago, just due to some timing, we went out and re-inspected the streets this spring. Uh, there's a few improvements that are listed they'd like to see made. Uh, Covered Bridge Heights Homeowner Association has contracts lined up with pavers when they're in town doing our asphalt work to do the required repairs there. Uh, they've also talked to a, a local contractor in town to do the concrete work uh, that were required to be upgraded. And again, with this agreement, what Stacey says, if, if they make those necessary improvements by August 31st of this year, then the city agrees to take over their portion of the street starting at Quail Ridge Circle and ending at the city limit line, which is just to the east of the Covered Bridge. Cover bridge will continue to be outside the city limits, but that portion of the street then would become a uh, city street. As you go west of cover of the covered bridge, that's already a city street. Uh, the paved portion there is, uh, was uh, platted in city street when all those areas over there were platted again just a couple years ago. Discussion from the public. Your vote, please. Resolution number 7061 passes 6 0. 
Resolution number 7062, executing the agreement between the city and Beatrice Public Schools District, outlining the infrastructure improvements to be completed by the new K through 5 elementary school and assignment of costs associated therewith and all other obligations of the parties. I move the resolution number 7062 be passed and adopted. I'll second it. This is the development of a partnership between Beatrice Public Schools and the city of Beatrice. Uh, with the onset of the new elementary, if you look at the roads that are out there, they certainly need improved. And you also have the challenge of trying to move 285 or 300 cars through there at 8 o'clock in the morning and 3.30 at night. And so we've been working with Beatrice Public Schools and we've developed a partnership with them to get this done. I think the one underlining philosophy or goal that we had was to A, do it right. I think that was the most important move that we felt. And I guess the second one, B, would be to make sure it's something that future city councils and future board of public or board uh, superintendents and, and the school boards don't have to try to redo this if we take a shortcut. So this recommendation puts this road, both roads at 33rd and Lincoln Street, in the best possible way that we can put it on for many, many years to come. As far as the details of the partnership, I will turn that over to Tobias. Yeah, so first off, just to provide some background on how we kind of got to this point. Uh, as the school was looking to develop this ground, uh, they commissioned uh, JEO to do a traffic study out at that location. Um, by doing that, JEO started looking at what the traffic count was going to be, what type of turn movements you were going to have. And in that traffic study uh, that was finalized right around Christmas time, I believe, um, they had some recommendations and they had some things that they were warranted. And just for clarification, if it's warranted, it's required. If it's recommended, it's just that it's recommended to make improvements and, and have the street kind of traffic flow better out there. At that point, JEO then came back and provided us a cost estimate of what it would take to make those improvements. Their cost estimate at the time was about $4.3 million. So that's the number that, you, as you see through the agreements, that's kind of the number that's worked on as we go through uh, everything here. So then we start looking at how do you split this thing up? And ultimately what you see in the agreement is a 60-40 split. The city taking on 60% of the cost, the city or the school coming on with 40% of the cost. Next question is, well, how did you get to that number? Uh, and by looking at it, uh, we looked at it a couple different ways. But what we really kind of end up doing was taking those things that were warranted and splitting those 50-50 between the school and the city. And then there's some of the items that were recommended that the city felt would help traffic flow better. Uh, we went ahead and said, hey, we want to make sure those are done so everything flows well out there. We'll take on those costs. And when you kind of add everything up, you came to about that 60-40 split. So that's how we got to that particular cost split in here. So the improvements themselves, what they will entail is the streets out there, the ones you see in red, uh, which are essentially from the west property line of the school where it meets Christ Community Church to 33rd Street, and then 33rd Street south to roughly the cemetery entrance to kind of give you a visual reference of, as you go out there. Uh, what we're going to do is remove the asphalt that's on that street, and you're going to make it a, a, to a concrete street. Um, Instead of the ditches, you're going to look at adding storm sewers, so curb and gutter, and have us have a look and a feel of a city street with uh, stormwater improvements there. You'll see right turn lanes be added on to Lincoln Street and on to 33rd Street. So as you approach the various entrances to the school's property, you'll have right turn lanes uh, for that traffic to be able to come out of the flow of the lane of traffic and be able to easily go into the school's property. And then we're also looking at adding center turn lanes on both 33rd and Lincoln Street to, again, if somebody needs to make a left-hand turn, they're not tying up traffic, they can pull over into the center turn lane, get out of the flow of traffic, make their turn safely. Um, those are kind of the improvements that we're looking at. And then also adding a roundabout at 33rd and Lincoln Street. That uh, would be a three-legged roundabout out there um, would be the other thing we're looking to do with these improvements. As part of this agreement, the city will provide the funding uh, for this project. The school then will reimburse us uh, as they kind of proceed uh, with this as, as laid out in the agreement. The school is going to get some credit for the cost they've already paid for the water main improvement that's been done out there. They'll get some credit for the uh, 
a building permit that they've applied for with the, the city, so they'll get improvements there. Kind of the other big one that's in there as part of this agreement is that within 90 days of the school vacating their current four elementary sites, uh, those sites will then be transferred to the city of Beatrice. Uh, we will then accept those sites. We will work on clearing the properties with asbestos and clearing the, the buildings there, demolishing them, and work on renovating those sites, uh, whether that's commercial or residential is yet to be determined, but we'll work through those as we acquire those. Um, then, if you kind of do the math, at, at the end of this, what's left is the, the uh, school share will be uh, paid back to the city over 20 years, 0% interest on monthly payments. Um, we're estimating those would be about $3,100 a month. That's kind of what we're estimating at this point, uh, but some of that will obviously depend as we kind of proceed with this project. There are provisions in the agreement that the city will continue to apply for grants, and if we do get grants, how does that impact everybody's funding? Uh, if the project comes in over budget, that's addressed in here. If the project comes in under budget, that's addressed how we kind of adjust those things. Um, but at the end of the day, all these street improvements can occur. Uh, there'll be no tax increases, there'll be no rate increases, and there'll be no bonds issued for payment of these improvements. Discussion from the council. Yeah, I'm just going to oh, go ahead, sir. You want to go? Okay. No, you go first. Okay. Um, this is a lot of money, all right? And it's a lot of money out of our budget that we weren't planning on. So uh, there's got to be another reason for me to vote for this. And in addition to the two things that you said, Mayor, I think the safety of all the children that are around there is probably my primary reason for voting for this. Um, we need the school, there's no question about it. It's a wonderful improvement to our community. Um, I just wish it would have been done in a little bit different way, okay, earlier. That would have solved a lot of problems. Um, I do have one question, T. Uh, we're not assessing anything to anybody for this, right? Correct, none of the neighbor adjoining property owners are we planning to assess anything to. Right, that's all I had, Mayor, thank you. I just think there's some highlights that need to be pointed out. Again, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't vote for this because the school is going to be good for the community, uh, the safety of the students and the parents driving the school, driving out there each and every day during the school year. Uh, if something tragic happened because we didn't improve the roads, I'd, I'd feel pretty bad. <clears throat> but I am going to tell you, this is about as one way as it can get. If this thing comes in over $4.39 million, the school does not get assessed any further value, just the city. We're going to give them $840,000 for those four properties. At no point do they pay any interest. Um, what's a couple of the other ones? There's about $300,000 worth of stuff that we're going to credit them for. So I hope everybody's happy because <clears throat> The phones are going to blow up, uh, and I'm going to just give them the phone numbers of people to call. Uh, if it wasn't for the safety of the students and the parents and the teachers, I'd vote no in a heartbeat. As Terry said, this should have been done in a different manner a lot earlier than now. Uh, but the only reason you're getting my vote is for the students and the parents. That's it. On the public. I'm Big Chris, and I'm not, not normally complaining to you guys at all, but I want to tell you something. You guys been into Lincoln? That roundabout is not a good idea. It is an accident waiting to happen. I don't mean to say bad about the public. You have no roundabouts that are... People are not trained for roundabouts. I drive a truck in Lincoln when I go to landfill. <clears throat> roundabouts are about the fastest way of an accident. I think you'd save more money by putting the street light there. <clears throat> and uh, the asphalt, as you see on that red part, um, you might as well take and, and go all the way down the cemetery road and do it all, all at once. 
the roundabout's going to take a lot of, a lot of ground. Well, it's going to take a big section. And I think the state uh, BSDC, they use that road. I think PSDC should be part of that, uh, paying some towards that road too. Um, the, you guys annexed them guys in, uh, use Beatrice Police Department, ambulances and fire departments. I'm just telling you what I see because uh, I, I live out east of town. But uh, I, the roundabout's a very bad idea. You're going you're gonna to see a lot of accidents because when you put that many, hope to God parents don't get mad. You put that many mothers in one area, come on guys, we all know what mother, what we go through with mothers at home. You put that many mothers together, we're gonna have an incident with roundabouts. And, and dads too, but most guys were a little bit better, better drivers, but uh, I just thought I'd let you guys know that. Um, to, to answer your question on BSDC? Yes. Because it is a state entity? We cannot get any funding from them. Okay. So unfortunately, that's one of the that was one of the challenges that you have out there okay. because also with the cemetery, uh -huh. there's not any ability to get taxes from the cemetery or okay. or pay for part of the road as well. So just wanted to clear that up for you. I just thought maybe we should, maybe 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 they would like to donate a little something something. Believe me, we're trying, <laughs> but we're not getting very far. I understand. I just think that roundabout thing. You know, you're just. <clears throat> My grandpa used to drive right through the roundabout with roll-off trucks. We, we can't make the corner, you know, when we were doing stuff. So we just drive right on through and makes a lot of boom. Bear. Thank you. Chris, you and I agree on a lot of things, and, and I've been very complimentary of things that, you've, that you're doing with your business. Um, there are a lot of people a lot smarter than we are on moving traffic and the process that goes with it. Roundabouts are a thing of the future, okay? We can say we don't like them, but use them, and they move traffic, and they move traffic safely. And I think you will see um, that this process will be very good, and it will move traffic, and that's why we want to do it the right way is for the, for the safety of the kids. If, if you don't think those kids that were mayor for the day aren't why we're doing this, um, kids, you know... <clears throat> I just kind of concerned about, you know, maybe uh, someone going into BSDC and they, they have to yield, you know, and I'm scared that the, maybe that car won't yield and, and you get a T-bone at the intersection. I, I, it's all right. I mean, I'm good for the safety. I love safety. I mean, I, I run Ross and... and the ball and Alex, everything's safety. But uh, I just don't want to see an accident, you know, with somebody getting hurt because sure. of, of a yield sign. I'd rather see a light there or some type of flashing thing where the police could say, well, you know, put a camera on the light saying, you know, you, you, you ran that red light, um, you're at fault. I'm just nervous sure. about a, a metal sign. Well, we appreciate your opinion, and, and I think what you'll find is, is hopefully we all find um, that it does exactly what it's designed to do and that everybody's pleased with the outcome in the long run. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with safety, though. I got one little question I'd like you guys to please address. Uh, basically... When this came about, if I don't, if I remember right, there was supposed to be no cost to the taxpayers whatsoever. <coughs> so yeah, we're not raising taxes, but now we're not having funding for other projects that essentially taxpayers are paying for. So I'd just like you to address that for the public, please. Just to give your name and address. I know we know who you are, Aaron, but Aaron, go around Philly. And that's a fair question. Um, you know. <coughs> We look at it as we had to do something. And, you know, it could affect other projects. There's no question about that. Um, but it's something that we're trying to figure out with no <coughs> impact and the least amount of impact as possible. Um, 
you know, the school is going to be there, and it's going to be a very nice asset for the community. And what we didn't want to do is obviously leave the streets the way they are, because if you've driven there, they're not in good shape. And, and so, so it really was one of those things that sometimes you have to move priorities around when something like this comes up. And we really didn't have much of another option. And what we didn't want to do is do a fix that in 10 or 15 years we're coming back in. Um, now, granted, for me, that'd be easier because we'd spend less money and I wouldn't be sitting in this chair. But it would strap down the future councils and future school administrators as they tried to figure out what to do with the road. So, unfortunately, things aren't getting cheaper. Um, if we get one of these grants, it would be wonderful. But we felt like, again, like several council members said, with the safety of the children and with moving traffic in there, um, we just felt like we had to move this project and this priority up and put other projects back. Which I understand. Yeah. Just you know, yeah. taxes are going to be used. For right. Us. That's the issue. And yeah. I don't agree with it. Because I do agree that you need to do something. Right. So, <coughs> so yeah, it was, it was, it, 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 I think at the end of the day, this particular partnership was really one that was thought out in cooperation with the school. And um, I think when you take a look at what, what is warranted and what was recommended and, and how we split that, it was a number of hours that not only has a a couple of people from the city council talked about, but the whole council has talked about, and I know the school uh, board has well. And so at the end of the day, I think it does accomplish what needs to be done for many years to come. So you guys want to say anything or? Okay. Thank you. Other discussion? I was just going to add, Bob, I think as a council, we all struggled with exactly what Aaron mentioned, you know, about how, what projects do you have to take away from to do this project. And we, we spent a lot of time trying to decide, and we kind of just came to this conclusion this is probably the best for the moment, and some other things are going to have to take a back seat, which is too bad, but we've got to make the school as safe as possible. And it'll be good for economic development, a nice school for the community, so that's why I'm going to support it. <coughs> Seeing so, you know, no other discussion, gentlemen, your vote, please. And that passes 6 0. I have an ordinance to convey real property owned by the city to Jeremiah Moorhead. Um, I'll introduce this ordinance and Mr. McLean. I move that said ordinance be given number 23-13. The title thereof be approved. The rules be suspended. And the said ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. Second. Uh, suspension of the rules is not debatable. So your vote, please. And that passes 6-0. <clears throat> ordinance number 23-13 by number only the first time. 23-13 by the second time, and 23-13 the third and final time. I move that ordinance number 23-13 be passed and approved. Second. But this uh, piece of property is at 7th and Ames Street. It is just west of Stoddard School. Uh, we tore down a house there about a year ago. Uh, the individual then deeded us the lot as partial payment uh, for the demolition. That lot is 37 by 73 feet, so it is an unbuildable lot. Uh, if you start applying our setback requirements to it, I believe your house can be two feet wide. So really not much you can do with it. The property owner to the west of there is Mr. Moorhead. Uh, he's got a, a rental property there. I believe he lives in the Firth area. He inquired about, uh, about buying this piece of property from us. Um, I looked at the assessed valuation of the land around there, did some, some calculations, came back to him and said, Based upon the assessed valuation, 1800 bucks is probably somewhere in that ballpark. He then made an offer to purchase that lot for $1,800. And so what we have before you tonight with this resolution and the following, or excuse me, this ordinance and the following resolution is to sell that lot there to Mr. Moorhead for $1,800. Discussion? Mm -hmm. 
Discussion? From the public? Seeing none, your vote, please. Ordinance number 2313 passes 6-0. Resolution number 7063, entering into the contract for sale of real estate with Jeremiah Moorhead. I move the resolution number 7063 be passed and adopted. Second. Okay, any more discussion needed? If not, your vote, please. 7063 passes 6-0. Next, we have the public forum. The purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. No, act, no discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Is there anyone here for the public forum? Seeing none, we'll move on to discussions and reports. First up, Main Street quarterly report. On yep. paper, but, <clears throat> or, I'm sorry, on digitally, but here's the paper version just in case. Uh, Michael Sothen, Main Street Beatrice, and thank you, Mayor, for letting us be here this evening. Um, this past quarter was certainly a, a busy one with some unique challenges that we've never faced before, um, but we're excited to be able to take on in partnership with the city of Beatrice. And, the main thing that I'm referring to is the Kensington property. Um, the Kensington property is certainly the largest single property that we have in the downtown area and is a property that has been vacant now for right at a year. And um, last fall, we were approached about the possibility of this building becoming, um, being transferred to either Main Street Beatrice or the city of Beatrice. And as we worked through the, um, the last couple months of trying to make our way through what that could potentially look like and um, kind of seeing where it would go after it had not sold on the, the private sector, um, it ended up being decided that the best option was to have that property donated to Main Street Beatrice. It's currently being leased by the city, as you guys well know, um, will eventually be acquired by the city with plans that um, we will seek out private development to reinvest in that property and see that carried forward into the future. And um, really appreciate, I guess, the, the opportunity that has been presented to, for Main Street and the city of Beatrice to work together on trying to see a better future for, for that property. But beyond that property, um, we have certainly been, been trying to work on, on several others. Here, just within this fiscal year, we have seen um, eight different properties that, that we know of that have changed hands. This, um, this has really been kind of a real focus of the last couple of years, and Terry Doyle has been a, a big help in um, trying to have conversations with different properties. We've, one of the biggest weaknesses that we have sometimes seen downtown, whether it's for entrepreneurs to get themselves started or um, just from an aesthetic standpoint of our downtown, just being kind of the welcome mat, the, the front door of the community, is the quality of property. And it's certainly a challenge because a lot of our downtown property is 100 to 140 years old. Um, but being able to see a lot of younger um, and just a little more aggressive investors come in with a new vision, a new dream is exciting. Um, nothing against those that have been here for, for a long time because they've made great investments, but it's nice to see properties when they change hands and that you see that, that continuation uh, continue to happen, especially on some properties that um, in some cases have, have uh, unfortunately sat for, for longer than uh, maybe we would have liked. And so really excited about some of the properties that have been changing hands and excited for the investments that are going to be happening at many of those properties and others. Uh, currently this quarter, there are seven sites that are currently under renovation um, and definitely should be quite a few more that are coming up here in a little bit. We'll provide a more detailed report on some of these properties at a, at a later date. Um, as far as when we are working with small businesses, I can't remember if it was last quarterly report. I think it was actually the one before that um, that we completed. I think it was back in December. We were talking about how the 
the interest from entrepreneurs had really slackened. Last year, we had really seen a, a real decrease in the number of people looking at opening a business and just even having conversations about starting a business. And it was really pretty concerning, um, the lack of, of activity that we were seeing there. Luckily, we have seen that really change, especially this year. After the holiday season, we've seen a, a real, real increase there. Uh, we have now um, actually had seven small businesses that have opened or relocated downtown. So far on this fiscal year, you can see the, the names of those there. Um, we've got several others that are looking at doing expansions. And the activity of people looking at starting a uh, small business has also been increasing. We've been getting more inquiries. We've been getting more interest in Main Street's revolving loan program and, and things like that, which is um, hopefully a, a good sign for Beatrice and seeing some renewed activity there. Some of the workshops that we're planning, we do have those in progress. The gentleman that runs um, business transition planning, this is really trying to help, again, kind of like we were talking about with the properties, but how do we keep a business from closing and instead being handed over to the next generation? Um, we are gonna be working with the Nebraska Business Development Center on one of their training workshops. It's likely gonna be occurring here in early June but he's been out the last couple of weeks with a, a couple of different things and so have not been able to finalize that date um, and then going to be doing some, um, some other different workshops, most likely with Center for Rural Affairs coming later on in the year. From a marketing strategy, we have luckily um, also completed one of our other big tasks and that's been getting the designation of Beatrice as a creative district. Uh, this is um, a program that had been implemented by the state of Nebraska under Senator Mike Flood and really um, being run through the Nebraska Arts Council and really creates some opportunities for us in the future. So we have finally got our designation of that and finalizing the, um, the grant application. This first grant application will really be able to leverage our ability to work with the local business on reestablishing the downtown holiday lights, doing some expansion of that. A little bit of a softer project to start, mainly to be able to get a grant application in that's very impactful to the community, but also takes advantage of opportunities this fiscal year for the state of Nebraska. As we get into additional fiscal years after this June, we will have access to additional um, state funding through this program that we hope to work collaboratively with the city and other partners on being able to um, put those to, to good use for the community. Michael, you want me to wait? to the end or do you want me to interrupt you? You can go for it. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, so can you just tell these people where we're at as far as the creating district grant, what the time frame is yeah. on that, if you would? We should have final determination within about six weeks from right now. Okay. And, um, and then we will be getting started on that project as anticipated uh, probably late June to early July. We've already got a lot of that scheduled. We are, we've selected Envision Landscapes to do the, um, the vast majority of that project. And so that's where so it's we're, pretty close. We're, we're getting, getting awfully close now. Has the chamber moved anything more on the marketing? Yeah, so that was the, the very next thing. So, Sorry. To, no, that's okay. But to um, so shift over towards the, that marketing campaign, the, the Beatrice Chamber is going to, it sounds like is going to be working with us. They're, the level of involvement that we had been on pause for the last few months has changed some, but we definitely have a, our path forward that we have um, are starting that process up again. And so we've um, restarted that, that pro program. We're probably going to see that roll out. Um, as far as Main Street Beatrice's usage of it, we'll probably come here in, in June. So we're awfully close on that as well, but we're at the very final stages of that. So that is um, coming along. I'll, I'll probably be able to share with you guys the visuals for that. We were trying to do some confirmation of different visuals here with a few different partners um, earlier today. And so that's, that's moving itself along as well. And we are, um, we are in contracted now with uh, Grow Nebraska to hold one of their mini architect workshops later this summer. The exact date we're still trying to work out. They are f wrapping up a couple others that are in other communities and depending upon how those go, we will try to get that scheduled as well. So on the marketing side, trying to continue to make progress there. Um, obviously, there's been several other things that largely the city has taken a lead on. You guys just approved that, that grant. Um, it's been really exciting to be able to assist uh, Tobias and Taylor kind of from a, a supportive role on a lot of the grant applications. I know Taylor's been 
busy turning in grant application after grant application. So hopefully we'll be successful on additional ones of those, but um, this, this one and also the, the Kensington project is likely moving forward and there's a few others out there. The water main project, trying to continue to work through concerns that have been raised by the, the business community on that. I think that um, talking with most people, they're, they're pretty satisfied with some of the changes in the, the efforts of communication on that project. We've got off to a little bit of a, a rough start, but everything's moving along a lot, lot smoother um, in that regard now. And um, just, I'm sure Tobias has already invited you guys to it, but there will be that next uh, Court Street Corridor plan on, in May, May 22nd. So I'm trying to get our, our business community to, to be there for that. Um, we've been working a lot on advocacy work. As you guys, I think I've told you, one of the challenges to the Kensington project has been the lack of the state historic tax credit. That program went away. We are pretty close to actually seeing it returned, hopefully. Senator Dorn is certainly optimistic. Um, it came out of the Revenue Committee. Senator Linehan um, has decided to help champion it and try to get it across the finish line. So we're <clears throat> optimistic that we will see a return of that credit, which will certainly um, really help us be able to leverage opportunities for properties like the Kensington, uh, the Paddock Kensington there. It's already been used um, at three other sites. We were just at one, Mayor and I, on Sunday as they were doing a dedication of part of the work um, in the National Register listing of Centenary United Methodist Church, the old Hevelone building on North 6th Street. That'll be the future home of Smith Schaefer Davis and um, also the building that holds Natural Vibes, the old... Um, Pulling drug property also took advantage of that. And so just as we were starting to get take it, be able to take advantage of those and see some awesome investments, we lost that program. So we've been working hard at getting that returned. It seems kind of crazy, but this last quarter did include our Chocolate Lovers event. I know it's just a, a little promotional event that sometimes um, may not garner a lot of interest, but we did bring in over 230 people. Just even this Sunday, I was grabbing lunch before the Centenary United Methodist event, and I had people come up to me at lunch saying how the Chocolate Lovers event <coughs> really changed their perceptions on Beatrice, that they didn't even realize we had 30 businesses that were in our downtown. And then they participated in the event, and there was over 30 businesses that were part of the event. And I was able to share with them that we actually have over 180 businesses in operation in downtown Beatrice today. And um, we were talking about just the potential. And yes, downtown is not what it used to be in a lot of people's minds, <coughs> but the future is not something to, to be disappointed in. And the current state, we've got a lot of amazing entrepreneurs and uh, property owners that have been making great strides in this community and appreciate the work that you guys have done in our downtown and certainly um, the support that you guys have given Main Street to be able to continue that work in be at downtown Beatrice. But with that, any additional questions? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah, M moving over to all those business visits will be a, a huge part of our focus the next uh, three months or so. So, not see anything else. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Next report is the Engage Quarterly Report. Rachel, I got it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman. Um, all right. So I gave you guys kind of quite the packet here. I've got um, just some fun information in the back with our quarterly newsletter, an annual report that we submitted um, and put out for the public to utilize and look through in addition to our members. Um, on the front, you're going to see our mission statement and a blurb about what we do in addition to the strategies that were adopted prior to my arrival at Engage. Um, so a couple of things that I wanted to touch base on is I've put the board through <laughs> quite the ringer of some st strategic planning and development of new strategies, updating strategies, and then additional goals. So 
Um, last week at our board meeting, we have actually passed and adopted some new strategies. So you'll see on the front of the report the current ones of business retention and expansion, new business attraction, entrepreneurship, small business, people attraction, and skilled workforce availability, marketing and communication to stakeholders, and grow, grow membership and investment and engage. So we are going to be keeping a few of those. So um, some of you are familiar, or most of you are familiar. Um, we have taken on the initiative of working in solving some of the child care shortage that our county is seeing. So one of the strategies that the board voted on is we are a community for kids, so creating partnerships to address child care availability and affordability, allowing our workforce to be utilized at its full capacity. Um, youth engagement and talent advancement. So this work is going to be focused on engaging our area youth by connecting them to career opportunities to increase their sense of place in the community. Expanding business and industry, focusing on maximizing opportunities for business and industry recruitment, retention, and expansion efforts to boost Gage County's economy. Building business relationships, so cultivating relationships to increase engagement from key community stakeholders. And finally, our fifth one is housing is abundant, diverse, and affordable. So this is going to focus specifically on examining, examining our current housing stock and identifying what needs um, we have, both here in the city of Beatrice as well as the county as a whole. So the board has been pretty active in working on those. We have assigned committees where board members will um, aid and assist in staff's work to ensure that these goals are met. So these, these strategies are three-year strategies then built out with one-year goals to help achieve those strategies. And then each year we will develop the next year's goals to ensure that those are being met. Of course, pivoting as times and things change, of course. Um, so also part of this quarter in <coughs> February, we had our annual meeting and banquet where we hosted um, Governor Jim Pillen, and he spoke to members on kind of his plans for the state over the next four years and some of his policies and things that he's looking to do. Um, we did retain two board members, Chad Lotman and Dave Norton, were reelected to retain their positions, and we added Heath Stewart um, as a county rep. He uh, replaces Rex Adams. Um, we have been engaging with local community partners such as BPS in career development meetings and we co-hosted a career fair at the high school last week actually where we had 29 businesses um, there to represent and offer work-based learning opportunities, job shadows, internships, things like that to get our youth connected to businesses ahead of the summer um, to maybe secure a position, things like that, but also to open the gateway for these students to have those school-to-work or work-based learning opportunities during the school year where they can receive school credit for that. Um, Engage is hopeful that our partnership with the local school districts um, and we hope to expand that outside of Beatrice in the future, where our hope is, is that by connecting these students at a young age with businesses, we will be able to help them build a network that will help them establish that sense of place and a connection to their community and with a business and so that they can see the opportunities that they have readily available to them right here in Beatrice in hopes that if they do go off and continue their education, that they will ultimately come back and live and work here in Beatrice or Gage County and raise a family. Kind of that grow our own local talent pipeline. Um, we have also been actively working. Um, we held, there was such an increase of want to participate in Manufacturing Day in the fall. Um, we had four schools participate in the fall and we've had schools outside of Gage County um, reach out and ask to participate in a similar type of event this spring. So we hosted an additional two schools, um, 93 students, um, Tri-County, 
came as well as Johnson County Central. So, and there are currently students that drive into Beatrice from those school districts and work at our local businesses, our manufacturers specifically. So this was great to expose a lot of other students to potential um, job opportunities that they could have. Um, we also hosted a small business administration, a business startup 101. I echo the sentiments that Michael um, talked about in, there has been a vast increase in, in wanting to start a small business and entrepreneurs kind of getting their feet off of the ground. We have fielded many phone calls and, and talked to a lot of people interested in doing that. So we hosted a training um, at Southeast Community College, and we had about 15 people register for that event, and we had about 10 or so show up that day, um, and it seemed to be well-received, and um, people are hopeful that we will continue to host those types of trainings too. So hopefully we can get some of those to get the information that they need to get those businesses going for them. Um, actively working on BREs, so BREs are business recruitment and um, expansion visits where we go out and talk to businesses specifically about where they are, what's going well, what's not working well, and what we can do to assist them if they were to need anything. Um, we are actively working right now in facilitating um, some business expansions, so we're kind of that, that first step, um, especially when we do those BRE visits, they may ask those questions and then we connect them to those resources that they need from there to get those expansion efforts started and going. Usually that's then where, where we connect them with the city for TIF and access to other funding sources if they need them or want them. And as always, um, economic development is, is typically known as business recruitment. Um, so we are obviously active, actively working to recruit several projects, um, some which we are very hopeful that we can um, secure and get in here too. So with that, I will take any questions. So Rachel, I've only been on the board a couple of months, but was that career day, is that something new? Um, yes, my understanding is BPS has never hosted a career fair of that nature. Yeah, you congratulated on that, that's a huge turnout on that. Plus it shows you like how much need our industries have if 29 showed up. Yes. So good job yes. on that. And there were, so all students in the entire high school were encouraged to attend. Um, it was about a two, two and a half hour event for businesses, so they took quite a chunk of time out of their day. Um, and the culinary students actually fed them all lunch, um, so that was kind of an interesting twist on it as well. But students were given punch cards where if they visited five businesses, they could turn it in to receive prizes. There were 296 punch cards turned in. So quite a few students actually hit that goal, and I anticipate there was quite a few more that walked around and talked to businesses because they all had free stuff. So um, very uh, widely attended and, and awesome, awesome event. We we're hearing fantastic um, results from businesses. So any other questions? I noticed you, got, you were able to um, secure some grants for some daycare centers to help, you know, help some Yes. Reduce your deficit, it looks like 21%. Is the legislature doing anything in this session to help more funding for this? I haven't followed that part of it real close. Um, there are a couple of bills that are active um, in the state legislature right now. Um, the biggest thing that's being publicized out there as far as state legislation goes Child care is now um, able to be utilized in the Imagine Nebraska program. So businesses can receive tax incentives or tax credits for engaging in child care, on-site child care. So the state's backing some of those incentives. Um, but it, over the last f couple fiscal years, the state has earmarked $66 million towards child care initiatives across the state. And there is more funding coming down the pipeline for That's sure. Fine. Very needed. Yes. I think, you know, just from being around economic development for a number of years, first of all, thank you for all the effort you're putting in. And, you know, one of the last things you talked about was business recruitment, <coughs> which is part of the job and is very important. But one of the things that I would just highlight 
with my vast experience there, it's a game of long ball because what seeds you plant today may not take root for three or four or five years. And so I know that a lot of seeds are being planted and I appreciate that, but I also wanted to have that caveat that I know how much of a struggle it is to finally get one of those projects across the finish line. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have an overview of the library. Welcome. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm, can you guys hear me? Uh, I'm Joanne Neiman. I'm the Beatrice Public Library Director, and this is Martha Pena, the Children's Youth Services Library. So she wanted to see how things went, so I said, come on down. So. We're glad to have you. <laughs> so we have uh, three, three full-time people, me, uh, Doug Howe, who is the uh, front desk supervisor, and then Martha, and then we have nine part-time employees that fill up the rest of the time. Um, I just want to throw out uh, one of my um, part-time staff is Michelle Vanover, and she has been there for 32 years. Uh, so the mission statement uh, for the Beatrice Library is to provide open and equal access to knowledge, ideas, information, and commentary from around the world with opportunities for personal, professional, cultural, and recreational enrichment to all individuals in their pursuit of a lifelong um, We uh, have recently gone from a library governing board to a library advisory board, and uh, so these are our five... <coughs> board members, and then we have a foundation, which one of our foundation members, Jason is back there not even paying attention to me, uh, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to throw in uh, that the foundation has been working on an outdoor learning center, uh, so it'll be east of the library, kind of in that empty, empty lot just off of the um, children's garden and we've already purchased the musical instruments and they are waiting to be put in the ground and then um, a gazebo and an outdoor classroom is being planned. So here's some of our, our uh, services obviously the books and um, videos. The videos not so much but um, with, with uh, streaming, we have a couple streaming um, platforms. Uh, audiobooks are still very big, but also uh, electronic forms of those, too. Uh, we have free internet, um, periodicals, which would be the newspapers and magazines. Uh, genealogical and local history collections. We have story times. Um, book discussions for all ages, um, exploration and discovery lab. That's, if you haven't been to the library lately, um, we have a wind tunnel that you can put um, scarves and packing peanuts and see how they go. But we have other things too, but that's one of the, the favorite things. Um, we have local and traveling exhibits. Right now we have downstairs in the lower level, we have the um, Nebraska Art Guild uh, has a traveling show, and we have that until May 8th, I believe. And then Southeast Community College just had their um, faculty and student show. Um, we have cultural programs, and then, of course, we have the maker space. So um, we'll be talking about that a little later. Uh, so then our next uh, one is the seed libraries. Um, 
we are only, there's only three other Nebraska libraries who have seed libraries, and it's uh, Omaha, Grand Island, and Beatrice. Um, and then we have Story Walk, which was brought to us by... Leadership Beatrice. Thank you. <laughs> I don't remember when, 2017? Probably. Somewhere right there. Um, and we were talking earlier, not... Those are getting to be a little bit more popular, but how many of them are in Nebraska? I sent out a listserv in the email, and I got 22 responses out of Nebraska. 12 said they had a, some form of a story walk, and 10 said they had one, but they didn't have one at all. And Martha changes it once a month. Mm. Sometimes do I. <laughs> and then we do have uh, two gardens, um, the, the children's garden, which is called the ABC Garden, and then the West Garden, which is the Rose Garden, um, and that <coughs> is supposed to have the uh, kind of the heirloom plants. Uh, so we have the Thomas Heritage Room downstairs, which has our rare books and uh, has the collection of Nebraska Gage County, um, the Atris history stuff, um, and then the we we house the Nebraska Genealogical Society's collection downstairs, and then we have the Vetti Cultural Arts Center, and then our library programs. Uh, we have Stitch One Read Two, which meets the second Thursday of every month. Um, ladies and or gentlemen, uh, get together and they talk about books they've read and whatever stitching projects. A couple years ago, we started a chess club. Um, they meet every Tuesday from 6 to 8, and then um, our monthly book discussions. You want to talk about story time? We have story time Wednesday mornings at 10.30, and we get some, even, I usually go by the holidays that are coming up, and I find books that uh, I can share with the kids, as well as some fun activities that can either include STEM activities, having them start up being a little bit prepared for their kindergartners, so they can experience, experiment with some of the activities. Um, and then, uh, I don't remember whose idea it was. I think it was the police, police that started it. Um, they wanted to do a story time, and so then we offered it to other city entities. Only one other person. Uh, and we that kind of invited, <laughs> we kind of sort of invited the pajama from the airport. He was barely used. So. <laughs> so Dennis, there's still some time. Um, so, then, so what you're saying that is everybody up here could certainly volunteer. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Just wanted just wanted to make that clear that everybody yeah. sitting up here could certainly take a turn. Um, and then, do you want to talk about the summer reading program? Summer reading program will be, uh, we're, we're planning on a kickoff this year to start off uh, having some games, having some people present we do have so far. Um, the mascot for the salt dogs coming in. We're trying to get some businesses that uh, are doing this all together now. We can get everybody from the community, or several people from the community to come in and enjoy some time there. Okay, so our maker space, um, we have an embroidery. I just took the pictures of the three largest ones, which is the embroidery machine, the laser cutter, and the 3D printer. Um, but we do have a CNC router, a heat press, a vinyl cutter, circuit, and die cutter, laminator, music, and photo equipment. Um, and uh, I also asked... So Tyler Milkey is uh, kind of the overseer of the maker space, and he works Wednesday through Saturday. Um, and so I had asked him if he would find out for me how many Nebraska public libraries have maker spaces, and 45 um, public libraries have them. 
uh, but we are one of very few that have a dedicated staff and a dedicated room area. Mm -hmm. And then we have our online sources resources. Uh, we have Chilton's. Uh, if if you have like old cars that you want to know how to fix them yourself, we have those. Um, on online, but we also have a hard copy at the library if you want to do it that way. Fregal Music, um, Libby. Libby is uh, ebooks, audiobooks, magazines. Um, we also have the newspapers. We have Beatrice, Lincoln, and Omaha, and then um, and then the New York Times uh, and some of the other. Nebraska um, journals. And then we have Hoopla, which is also ebooks and, and audiobooks, but mostly is um, um, movies. It's our, it's our movie streaming platform. Um, and that is it. I do want to just add we're getting ready to do our accreditation um, and so when I, this will be my first go of it. Um, I found out that I will be going up against peer libraries, and a peer library is 15% um, plus or minus the, the legal population. So our only other legal populated community the size of Beatrice is South Sioux City. And so they, the library commission wants to have a, a little broader side. So we go to to Iowa, and so our peer groups are in Iowa, and then one in Nebraska. So uh, I've been kind of watching what other other I, Iowa libraries have done. So. Does anybody have any questions? How many actual like library card or? Member, you know, they don't do library cards per se. Yes, they do. Oh, you do actually. <laughs> See, it shows I, I don't go. <laughs> <laughs> do My wife maybe has. Do you do you have a library card? My wife does. No, do you have a library? No, I do not. <laughs> um, I think we have. I don't have it in front of me, if, uh, but I think we have quite a few. Ten thousand. I was just curious. We are. Um, we do get <laughs> some money from the from the county, so um, if you're in Gage County, you don't have to pay for a library card. Anything else? Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Our last item on the discussion <clears throat> reports is a short discussion on the Beatrice City Code Section 2-67 regarding placing items on the agenda. This was a request uh, for a discussion by Councilman Fairbanks, who's not here, but uh, I guess um, for a lot of us, this place was, this was put in place a long time ago, and so I'll turn it over to Tobias, who has some of the history. Yeah, uh, this uh, City Code's affectionately referred to as the bidding rule. Uh, so if you date yourself back to Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Bidding was on the council. Um, but what it, what it says is that if any city council member wants to get an item on the agenda, they get the signature from four other council members, so a total of four council members sign off, any item can be placed on the agenda. So. I don't know. I mean, we can open up discussion, or I can kind of tell you my philosophy. Um, I certainly think that you know, in the last five months, I haven't been really saying no a lot. I think that there's going to be a lot of good ideas. Um, what you do with this is really up to you guys as a council. Uh, I will say that if there's an idea or something that comes across that really would not be good for the city of Beatrice, then I would have an obligation to say no, because that's what I took the oath for. But I haven't seen any of those. And so I guess with that, I'll just let you know that's my philosophy. Um, and open up. I know Dwayne. Thank you. I, uh, 
I would like to see this eliminated. Um, I really don't think that, uh, you know, what happened in the past is going to happen with this council. But uh, one of the things that, that, um, that I feel is if somebody comes to me and says, I'd like this discussed at the council meetings. I don't feel like I should have to go out and find three other council members to be sure that it gets on the agenda. The other thing is, and I'll just put this out here, is, you, you know, you, you and I, Mr. Mayor, have had a conversation about some things. Uh -huh. Well, if I'm out there and I have to approach seven other council members with what has happened in the past, that puts me in violation of, you know, according to what o you and o yeah, the Open Meeting Act. Open Meeting Act. So uh, to me, that makes it almost impossible to get four other council members <coughs> to agree about this. And I really feel, you know, as you said, you know, there are things that obviously, you know, right. don't need to be on there. Right. But I really feel if somebody comes to me and says, I want to see this, I want to be able to talk about it or have you bring it up. I really feel that, you know, we should be able to, you know, come and say, look, let's put this on. Let's talk. You know, if it takes five minutes, you know. Fine, you know, ten minutes, okay. But I think everybody out there, we work for the we work for the public. They're our boss. If they want to, you know, something to be brought up, I really feel, you know, we have an obligation to at least talk about it, even if it is only a couple minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. It isn't going to make our meetings any longer, and we can vote it up or down or whatever we want to do. But I just really feel that this this uh, section. 2-67 needs to be gone. I just, I don't like it. And so, I mean, that, you know, I definitely would vote to get rid of it. I would just like to note that that rule in particular doesn't functionally make it impossible for you to go out and recruit four other, or three other council members for that. Uh, you get one more, all in the same room, then yeah, you've got an issue. But at, at four... Well, yeah, but I might have to go to all eight council members to get the four. That's what I'm saying. But not, you know, so. but not all at once. So. Well, you know, it doesn't well. mean there is. But, you know, if you're talking about the same thing, you're approaching these council members and things. And, you know, that's the discussion, you know, the mayor and I had on it. And, right. you know, so that's, that's one of my concerns about this, you know. Right. So, Mike, is it a violation of the Open Meetings Act to go to all the other seven council members to try and get something on? Not on an individual basis, so long as you're not meeting with a majority of those people all the same. No, I disagree I, with you. I, I think that's the wrong interpretation, and I think if, to answer your question, I think the answer is yes. So, so for instance, if... I think we should just move this to the next meeting and put it up for an up or down vote. I, I mean, and, and I have no problem with yeah, that. Yeah. I, I do think you do run into that exact risk. Yeah. Um, and and so. I, you know, I agree with you, you know, Mr. Mayor, because, you know, the discussion we had, I understood exactly where you were on it, and I do agree with you on that. So, I mean, you know, if, if, if everybody's on the same page, I don't care one way or the other. I'm not sure I need to say anything, but the... the <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> need to help you? <laughs> um, the, I have, like, zero problem with you or Tobias or anybody put uh, me asking things to get put on the agenda in the past. Zero, okay? So anything I say from this point forward... Please understand that. <clears throat> I just don't think this is good governance. I just do not. Um, I think uh, the people elected me to try to represent them. If they bring something to me that I feel should be on the agenda, I would like the opportunity to bring it on the agenda without having to solicit everybody else. I would like to be able to go to you guys and just get it on the agenda, period. And, and I trust these guys that are around the table with me that we're not gonna put a bunch of junk on the agenda that nobody is interested in talking about. I just don't think that's gonna happen. So, um, but more, often, more than anything else, I just don't think it's good government. I really don't. So if we get a chance to vote for this, I'm gonna vote down. I would, well, you'd actually, yeah, right. You, you, would, you would vote to repeal. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. It, it just, just for the record, uh, what Terry said is exactly true. Anytime we've came to so far during your tenure, we've had no problems getting stuff on. Uh, but then again, if, it's, if we're violating the Open Meetings Act, then we definitely need to get rid of it. Yeah, and I guess the only thing that I would caution 
is, is sometimes, if it's a one-person issue, we have to take a look at that. It really needs to be something that affects a number of people in the community yeah. rather than a one-person issue. Um, I, I firmly believe that's important to get a, a gauge of, of how big of an issue it may or may not be. Um, we will put it on the agenda for the 15th, and people can take a look at that. I think the other thing that I would like to maybe, I don't know if it's a caution or maybe just a heads up, I think if you look at our ordinance book, ordinance go back how many years? A long, years. a long time. And so we may have more things that are outdated. And I think we need to figure out a more logical way to filter through ordinances than bringing one up one at a time. And I know that, you know, Councilman Barnard has had that. So I think over the next couple of months, we got to figure out a better way than just bringing one ordinance up at a time. Because on the other side of the coin, we're not going to get what we need to get done. And we've got a lot of important issues in front of us over the next three and a half years. So we'll put this one on the agenda. And then I think we need to have a broader discussion about how we move forward and take a look at some of the ordinances that are in the books that have been there for a number of years that are either good for the city or not helping us. And so I guess I would just end with that. Okay. All right. We are going to go into executive session tonight. There will not be any <coughs> action taken. Uh, Mr. McLean. I move that the uh, city council go into executive Closed session at 8.31 p.m. for the protection of public interest to discuss real estate and contract negotiations. Second. <clears throat> Your vote, please. Don't need a vote, do we? Yes, we do. A vote, please. Yep. Pass the 6-0. See, I'll still someday I'll learn all this. Can we send a Facebook down?